Hello sa inyong lahat. Um, welcome to another lecture video. So for this lecture video, we will be discussing the obligations of the partners to third persons. So from the previous lecture videos, no, we are done with uh, the obligations of the partners with respect to each other, uh, the property rights, and the property rights of the partners. Now, uh, today, ito, itong lecture video na ito, ang concentration natin ay yung obligation naman ng mga partners in favor of the public uh, sa, sa kapag nakipag-transact na sila with the public. Okay, so we refer to them as third persons. So for the first uh, item, first article for our consideration, Article 1815 of the Civil Code, it provides that every partnership shall operate under a firm name which may or may not include the name of one or more of the partners. And then those who not being members of the partnership include their names in the firm name shall be subject to the liability of a partner. So in Article 1815, sinasabi lang niya yung uh, business name ng isang partnership. Uh, usually, no? so usually, ang mga partnership, uh, nilalagay yung apelido nila doon sa partnership name. So for example, si Sip Gores and Velayo and company. Yan. So it's a professional partnership. That's the firm name. So may purpose siya, syempre. Na pag naglagay ka ng ano mo doon, ng, ng pangalan mo doon, yung apelido mo doon, nai-inform yung public who are the partners in this partnership. Especially if that is a professional partnership. Syempre, uh, you rely on ano, Hindi naman kasi tayo pwede mag-advertise, so we rely on our integrity and our, ano ba, ano ba yung term na ginagamit ko? Yung by word of mouth, kung paano ba magtrabaho ang isang tao, kung paano siya nag-deal with his or her client. So doon siya nakikilala. So kapag merong partnership name at nadudun yung apelido, merong reliance to the public. Uh, may, merong reliance na pwedeng gawin yung public. So for example, nakita ay, Si Sip Gores and Belayo, ay magagaling niyang mga yan. No? Magagaling niyang mga accountant na yan. So we can rely on this, uh, dito, on this uh, partnership. It is a firm na ito. Um, or we can we, ha we have confidence in this, ano, in this partnership. Kasi kilala ko, to, kilala ko itong mga to bilang mga gantong klaseng uri, mga professional na accountant. So may purpose siya na nasa-serve. Sabi ng Article 1815, hindi naman daw required lahat ilagay. So even if partner, what if umabot na kayong lading di man na kayo dun sa partnership, papakaba-haba na ng, ano ninyo, ng partnership name ninyo. So even if partner ka, in a partnership, pwedeng hindi kakasama doon, hindi kasama yung pangalan mo doon sa partnership. Usually, para hindi naman siya mandiscriminate, yan, nakalagay, uh, kunyari, XYZ Partners. X, Y, Z, and partners, or X, Y, Z, and associate, or X, Y, and Z, and company. So, hindi naman siya parang nang exclude kung baga. So, yun, malinaw na hindi required na, hindi, hindi required na lahat ng apelido or pangalan ng mga partners ay indicate mo doon sa partnership name. Pero, sa pangalawang paragraph, kapag nilagay mo yung pangalan mo, o inalaw mo na gumagamit yung pangalan mo as ano as part ng partnership name part ng partnership name you will become liable as a partner again nakakaroon kasi nga ng reliance so for example nakita yung apelido mo doon even though you are not a partner in that partnership pero ano doon yung pangalan mo so nakikiride kung baga syempre kung, kung ako yung gagawa ng partnership I will not allow naman na maglagay ng ng apelido ng tao doon na hindi ko naman partner. Tapos ano pa, of questionable integrity pa. Bakit na ilalagay of questionable integrity doon? So syempre maglalagay ako doon ng someone who is of proven integrity. So if that person, if that someone of with proven integrity, nakita niya yung partnership name, nakalagay yung pangalan niya at apelido niya na pan inquiry siya yung tinutukoy doon. Dapat mag-object siya. Hindi, hindi ko naman kayo partner, ba't nilalagay yung pangalan ko dyan? 
obviously for one reason. Maybe for more than one reason. Pero at least, isa sa mga reason kung bakit nilalagay yung partnership, yung apelido mo doon is gusto mong makiride doon sa goodwill na kung ano man meron yung pangalan mo. If you allow, if a person allows a partnership to use his or her name, even if, no, despite the fact na hindi naman siya partner in that partnership, then uh, to protect no, to protect that, again, the public or third persons, that person who allows his or her name to be used in a partnership name, even if he is not a partner in that partnership, will be subject to the liability of a partner. Hindi sinabi ng Article 1815 that that person will become a partner. Ang sinabi lang niya, shall be subject to the liability of a partner. So in, in essence, wala siyang right as ng isang partner, pero yung liabilities ng isang partner meron siya. So yun lang. Um, pero wala naman siguro ang gumagawa dito na yung, par- yung pangalan mo. Siguro, ganito na lang, at most, if nag-withdraw ka na from the partnership, supposedly that would result into the dissolution of the partnership. But despite the with- withdrawal, of that person from that partnership, they retained the name of that person, then maaaring invoke tong Article 1815. Kasi the part, the, again, the public may rely. Alam naman talaga namin na partner siya dyan. Eh. Kaya kami nag-trust sa kanila. Kaya kami nagpa-utang, for example. O kaya kami, kaya, in, kaya namin in-engage yung services ng firm na yan. Kasi alam naman talaga namin na partner siya dyan. Di ba partner naman talaga siya? No? Ang sagot doon, yes. Pero naging partner siya. Ngayon, hindi na nag na siya from the partnership. So, pwede nilang sabihin, eh, hindi naman namin alam na nag na siya eh. So, yun lang. So, ganun pa rin, if that person allows his or her name to, ano, to be used by the partnership, no, despite the fact na nag na siya from that partnership, that that person will still be liable as a partner. Again, he will not become a partner because uh, the relationship among the partners is fiduciary in nature. Diba? But the liabilities imposed upon a partner will be, uh, ano tawo dito, will be considered, no, as the liability of that person. Okay, eighteen fifteen. Now we we'll go to the next eighteen sixteen. All partners, including industrial ones, shall be liable pro rata, or pro rata, or pro rata, with all their property and after all the partnership assets have been exhausted you know, for the contracts which may have been entered into in the name and for the account of the partnership under its signature and by a person authorized to act for the partnership. However, any partner may enter into a separate obligation to perform a partnership contract. So this is Article 1816. Uh, confirm ng article na ito yung nature ng unlimited liability ng isang partner sa isang partnership. Now, this is this is a this is in contrast with the liability of shareholders in a corporation. 'Di ba kapag ikaw ay uh, nag-contribute ka, no, nag-contribute ka in a corporation in the amount of 100,000, your extent of liability in that corporation is only up to 100,000. Hindi pwedeng mag ma, ma, habol pa or ma-involve pa yung personal properties mo to settle the liabilities of that corporation. But with the, with respect to partnership, siguro ito, isa to sa mga ano sa mga disadvantages of um, being a partner in a partnership no vis-a-vis being a shareholder in a corporation. Kasi sa partnership nakalagay dito that after exhausting, hindi naman automatic, no? After exhausting all partnership assets. So ibig sabihin Siyempre kung ito ay partnership liability, ang una mong gagamitin para isettle ang partnership liability ay partnership assets. Hindi ka naman tatalon agad doon sa mga assets ng mga uh, partners. Pero if, no, if notwithstanding na na-exhaust na lahat, inubos na lahat ng partnership assets to settle yung mga partnership liabilities at meron pa rin naiwan na partnership obligations or partnership liabilities, sino mananagot dyan? Ang sabi, all partners na sila and that includes industrial ones even if industrial partner ka hindi ka ah hindi ka exempt no hindi ka exempt ibig sabihin pati yung sarili mong properties maaring maaring ipang 
bayad doon sa mga utang ng partnership. No? Pwedeng gamitin yung sarili mong properties para pambayad ng partnership obligations. No, again, we have to confirm dito, we have to we have to reiterate yung ating binanggit before about a separate juridical personality. Diba sabi natin, ang partnership ng asset ay ang asset ng partnership ay asset niya, hindi asset ng partners. Ang obligations ng liya, ng ng partnership ay hindi obligations ng partner. Hiwalay sila eh. Magkahiwalay sila ng tao o magkahiwalay sila na persons. Pero yung nature ng uh, partnership na being a partner in a partnership, especially if you are a general partner, um, you have this obligation you have this obligation to um answer for the ano for the liabilities no or unsettled liabilities of the partnership using your own uh, properties or using your own assets no? gagamit niyan pambay sa iyo eh, sir nalilito na ako no kasi during our in some of your lecture videos nakalagay doon that industrial partners are not liable for losses correct yon or let us make a difference dito yung previous na topic natin ay losses ito, liability. When you speak of loss, liabilities. Liabilities. When you speak of losses, it pertains to the operations of the company. Kung i-compare mo dito yung, ano, yung revenues niya at saka yung expenses niya. Kung mas mataas yung, re yung expenses sa revenue, then baran siyang loss. Okay. Yung liabilities ay not, not necessarily equivalent to losses. Diba? Ang liabilities ay in favor, usually, hmm? matututo natin in, in the future na hindi palagi, but usually, ang liabilities pertain to third persons. Kaya nga tayo, ano, kaya nga ang title ng chapter na ito ay Obligations of the Partners with Regard to Third Persons. Panlabas yan. Yung losses panloob. Internal ito. Kung baga pag losses ang pinag-uusapan, ang nag-uusap lang palagi ay yung mga partners. How do we distribute amongst us, ourselves itong mga itong pagkalugi na ito? So pwedeng i-invoke kapag ganyan at wala silang usapan, sabihin ng industrial partner o wala naman tayong pinag-usapan about sharing of profits. Wala tayong pinag-usapan about sharing of losses. In default of any stipulation to the, uh, regarding the, the distribution of profits and losses bilang industrial partner, I will not share in the losses. Tama ba siya doon? Yes, tama siya doon. Kasi losses ang pinag-uusapan. Pero pagdating sa liabilities, tat, hindi, na, hindi lang sila yung nag-uusap. Merong third person involved. Sabi ng third person, pinautang ko kayo. Pinautang ko tong partnership na ito. Uh, supposedly, bayad na ako five months ago or one year ago. Pero hindi pa rin kayo bayad. So nagahinahab after ko ng... I'm already after the partnership asset. So after exhausting yung partnership... Meron pa rin kayong utang sa akin. So sino nang hahabulin ko? Kayo na, mga partners. Bilang third person, wala siyang pakailam, kung baga. Wala siyang care kung saan manggagaling yung payment na yan. Ang concern lang niya, mabayaran siya. Yun lang yung concern ng third person. So, hahabulin niya ngayon lahat ng partners, including industrial ones. So, with respect to the settlement of liabilities in favor of third persons, you can add, in, even industrial partners are held liable. That is clear under Article 1816. Inalaw niya yan, including industrial ones. Okay. So, if after exhausting the partnership assets, naghabol na ngayon si third person, nagpunta siya kay capitalist partner, pati kay industrial, pa, industrial partner, nakakolekta na siya. So happy na ngayon si third person. Out of the story na siya. Settled na yung liabilities. If that is the case, can the industrial partner uh, recover from the general partners, the, uh, the general, the capitalist partner rather? Can the industrial partner recover from the a uh, capitalist partner with respect to his or her contribution for the settlement of the liabilities of the partnership 
the answer is yes. Pwede na. Again, pwede lang niyang i-invoke yun sa kanyang co-partners. Hindi niya pwede i-invoke yun sa third person. Hindi niya pwede sabihin sa third persons na I'm an industrial partner. I will not be held liable. No? I will not make good of the obligation of the partnership. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Pag third persons, protektado palagi. Wala naman, wala naman siyang pakailan po anong arrangement nyo inside the partnership. Basta si third person, nagpautang siya, hindi siya nabayaran. O kailangan siyang masettle. Kailangan masettle yung kanyang claim against the partnership. Pero, the law also protects the industrial partner kasi nag-contribute na siya eh. By way of make, by way of ano, rendering services. In fact, nag nasuffer niya na inglos. So it should, it is ano, it is parang dito. Adding insult to, uh, rubbing salt to the wound. Wow, meron pa pa yung ano dito. Uh, word of ano tao dito. Meron pa tayong pataling hagang salita. Rubbing salt no, to the wounded area. Di ba, nag-render na ako ng service, tas lugi pa rin tayo. Mababawi ko pa ba yung servisyo ko? Hindi na. So, madadagdagan pa yung pagkalugi ko kung ako pa yung magbabayad ng mga utang natin. So, ganun yung ano. Again, as amongst them, among them, as among them, pwede yon Pero with respect to third persons, hindi. The third persons will have to, the, the, uh, tawag dito, obligations in favor of third persons must be settled regardless of the classification of the partner whether siya ay industrial or capitalist. But sa dulo ng usapan na to, sa dulo ng lesson about partnership, we will learn na merong mga third may merong mga uri ng partners na hindi liable to third persons using their own property. Talagang hanggang contribution lang yung liability nila. Okay? That's 1816. 1817, any stipulation against the liability laid down in the preceding article shall be void except as among the partners. So, yun nga, if, if, they, will, ano, if they will stipulate na ako, hindi ako, oh, ano, kanyar si A, B, A, B, C, B, E. Capitalist, 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 industrial. Silang lima, nag-uusap sila. They have this stipulation. Sabi, okay, uh, uh, B is exempt. Ayan, is exempt from the application of Article 1816. Ibig sabihin, hindi daw siya magiging liable using his or her own assets. Ayan. So ito na ngayon si Y. Siya yung third person. O, may utang yung partnership kay Y. Let's say, ang utang ay 150. Yan. Ang partnership assets, 100,000. So, ang ginawa ni Y, in-exhaust na yung 100,000. So, wala na ngayon yan. So, ang utang na pera ay, ang utang pang naiwan ay 50,000. Kasi na-settle yung 100. Eh, using partnership assets. Now, itong 50,000 kanina niya kukolektahin. Kay A, kay B, kay C, kay D, at kay E, lahat sila mag-share, preferably equal 10,000 each para ma-settle na yung remaining obligation kay Y. E ano po, exempt nga po si B, e industrialist partner nga si E, kahit na yung sa for a third person is concerned, wala siyang pakailang sa mga ganyang inexempt mo siya from liability, ito industrial partner, wala, basta yung third person, ma-settle sila as long as valid yung kanilang claim against the partnership, settle sila. Pero that that ano exemption provided by the partner in favor of B shall apply among them. And nag-uusap sila eh. They agreed na si B ay, uh, tawag dito, they agreed na si B ay exempt. So si B can ask for reimbursement. So pwede niyang bawiin yung 10,000, for example, na kinontribute niya para manahimik na si Y, and as 3,333 from C and D as well as from A para makuha niya yung 10, mabawi niya yung 10,000 niya. And E being an industrial, industrial partner can ask for reimbursement from A, from C, and to, from D for the same amount of 3,333 3, para makuha niya yung 10,000 na kanyang itinam bayad. Uy!
Okay? Sana naintindihan natin yun. Let us continue. 1818. Ako, ang haba nito. May continuation pa sa second. Tatlo, ang dami. Okay. Pero this is similar to the previous lesson. Basahin na lang natin. 1818. Every partner is an agent of the partnership for the purpose of its business. And the act of every partner, including the execution in the partnership name of any instrument, for apparently carrying on in the usual way of the business of the partnership, of which he is a member binds the partnership. Unless, so there's an exception, unless the partner so acting has in fact no authority to act for the partnership in, the, in that particular matter, and the person with whom he is dealing has knowledge of the fact that he has no such authority. Um, hindi ko na uulitin yung mahabang discussion doon sa how to manage the affairs of the partnership. Kasi iba-ibang situation yun. Merong, merong may na-appoint ng managing partner, merong maraming managing partner, merong kanya-kanya sila ng ano, ng area, kumbaga, kanya-kanya sila ng department, kanya-kanya sila ng decision. Merong uh, dapat sabay-sabay nag-decide, may gano'n. At meron din naman na wala. <laughs> hindi sila nag-appoint ng managing partner. Doon tayo sa hindi nag-appoint. Kasi kapag walang in-appoint, tapos nag-perform pa ng act, apparently on behalf of the partnership. Every partner is an agent of the partnership. Uh, hindi lang siya simple statement kasi ano siya eh, uh, kapag ang isang agent in, in an agency relationship ay uh, may, may pinerform na act, legally binding act, hindi lang siya yung gumagalaw doon, hindi lang siya yung gumagawa, pati yung nirerepresent niyang principal ay kasali na rin, damay kumbaga. So ibig sabihin kung pumalpak ka, damay yung principal mo, palpak din siya. Pero kung sakali naman na tumama ka, may benefit. Siyempre, beneficial din yun sa principal mo. Okay, so, um, since binding ang act ng isang agent no, on behalf of a partnership of, or of a, a principal, kung ano man yung gagawin ng agent, parang ginawa na rin siya ng partnership. And, impliedly, or by extension, ginawa na rin siya ng iba mong partner. So ano siya, di ba? So pumapasok, bumabalik na naman tayo dun sa, ano, sa principle ng relationship or the, 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 tawag dito, the nature of the relationship among the partners that fiduciary siya in nature. This is based, the partnership, the relationship among the partners is based on at most trust and confidence. So, uh, Iaalaw mo ba yung sarili mo na ma-associate ka sa mga taong palpak? Yun, yun ba yung gusto mo? Or dito sa mga taong successful? dito sa mga professionals. Okay ba sa'yo na, na ma-linya yung pangalan mo sa mga manggagansyo? Kilalang manggagansyo? Okay ka ba doon? Kasi kapag okay ka doon at nagtitiwala ka, uh, you face the consequences. Kapag nanloko tong mga to, no, kapag meron silang ginawang katarantaduan, damay ka doon. Kasi yun nga, agent kayo lahat ng partnership. Kapag may ginawa ka, ginawa yun ng partnership, ginawa din yun ng partners mo. Buti kung maganda... Sana maganda yon Pero kung may ginawa yung partner mo, nababind yung partnership, damay ko dun. What if masama yung ginawa niya? What if negative yung ginawa niya? Damay-damay kayo ngayon dyan. At hindi mo pwedeng dahil sabihin, eh, hindi ko naman ginawa, yun siya gumawa niya. Siguro between you, between the two of you, possible yan. Kung magkakahabol lang kayo internally, possible yan. But in so far as third persons are concerned, wala silang pakailan, eh, in-associate mo yung sarili mo sa kanya eh. Kung alam mo yung impact ng isang ano uh, entering into a contract of partnership, kumbaga, para kayong solidary uh, debtors. No? The, the act of one is the act of all. Kapag may ginawa siya, as if ikaw din yung gumagawa nun. Okay. <clears throat> ano na yun? No? Um, we have learned that before in detail. Uh, Article 1818 also speaks of the Doctrine of Apparent Authority. Doctrine of Apparent Authority. Uh, but may ganito. 
but may doctrine of apparent authority. This is for practical reasons and for ease of business. Kasi kapag nakikipag-transact ang isang partner sa third person, dun sa client, dun sa customer, kung walang doctrine of apparent authority, palagi yung magtatanong yung isang uh, prospective client or existing client or customer, doon sa kausap niyang partner ka ba? Pag-ganun siya. Anong proof mo na partner ka? Ba't mo ginagawa? Ba't ka nakipag-usap na partner ka ba talaga? O after nun, dala na naman pa, panibago. Ikaw, partner ka ba? Lagi siyang tinatanong partner ba? <laughs> With the doctrine of apparent authority, huwag ka na magtanong. No? Kasi kung meron siyang representation na partner siya, there is an apparent authority. Especially if, ito, una, especially if binibit-bit niya yung partnership name in that instrument. So for example, meron kayong pinipirmahan na kontrata, meron siyang inisyon na resibo sa'yo. Under the partnership name, hindi mas sinasabing siya lang yun. Pag nalagay niya doon, X, Y, ako niya rin nalagay ko doon, Lee Christian Louis Lim, for, kanyari, Lim, Lim, and Lim partnership. Kanyari, meron akong partnership with, together with uh, two other names. No? Nakita mo naman, no? Ba't mo ba itatanong? Kasi there's already an apparent authority. Hindi ko naman sinasarili yung yung ano transaction eh. They disclose ko nga sa iyo ay partner ako do sa partnership pa. Ayun no. Although nilagay ko yung pangalan ko dito, Christian Lovely, naka-indicate naman sa resibo mismo na Lim Lim and Lim partnership ito. Or sino dat ko mismo, Lim and Lim and Lim Lim, Lim and Lim partnership. That's the first indication no? of that doctrine of apparent authority. Hindi niya pinapasok yung kontrata in his or her personal capacity. Sinasabi niya, partner ako doon sa isang partnership. Pangalawa, yung transaction is usual way of business of the partnership. Hindi ka magtataka. So for example, uh, the partnership is engaged in the supply of medical goods. No? Rebenta sila ng, ano, let's say, face mask face shield, medical goods there. Face mask, face shield, PPE, mga ganyan yung binibenta nila. Or that is the purpose of the partnership. Kaya nga nakalagay ko nga, X, Y, N, C, partnership, uh, general, ano, medical goods, med- general merchandise. Yung mga so anong ino-expect mo na ibibenta nila? Siyempre, mga ganong bagay. Face mask, face shield, temporary, ang tawag dito, thermometer, PPE, etc., etc. So pag meron nung isang partner, na sinasabi niya na, oh, bibentahan kita ng PPE kasi yun yung business namin. There is no reason for that third person to question. Diba? Ba, hindi mo siya pwede tanongin na, ba't ka nagbibenta ng PPE? Siyempre, obvious yung sagot. Because the partnership is engaged in that kind of business. Magtataka nga lang, magtataka lang yung third person kapag yung isang uh, partnership who is engaged in the uh, trading of medical equipment ay biglang nagbibenta, for example, ng uh, ano ba, construction supplies. Bibenta siya ng contract, construction supplies. Kung ikaw yung third person, siyempre may tataka ka. Teka lang, bakit siya nagbibenta ng construction? Bakit, bakit biglang pako na yung binibigay niya sa akin? Cemento na, hollow blocks na. That contradicts the doctrine of apparent authority. Obviously, as a authority to do that. Diba? Saan niya nakuha? Saan niya nahugot yun? Eh, yung partnership nila is for medical equipment. No, ba't siya nagbebenta ng non-medical equipment, construction supplies? So hindi mo pwedeng i-invoke itong doctrine of apparent authority. So for example, yung tao na yan, nagtiwala siya, sige supplyan ko kayo or bila ko sa, kanya, sa inyo or whatever, nakipag-transact siya. And then later on, he or she, that third person, suffer damages. O kaya hindi siya makakolekta ng, ng pinautang niya. For example, nagpautang siya. Hindi niya makolekta ngayon. Uh, sabihin niya, oh, di ba partners kayo? Anong, par- anong partner? Anong... Siyempre, pwede nang itanggi ng iba yan. Anong sinasabi mo dyan? Eh, wala naman kami transaction with you. Hindi nakipag-transact ako dun sa isa niyong kasama. Di ba the act of one is the act of all? Ano po bang binili niyo sa kanya? Ano po? Uh, hollow blocks tsaka cemento. Ah, wala ho. Hindi ho namin business yan. Pwede nang itanggi yun. And the third person cannot invoke yung doctrine of apparent authority. Alam ko partners, hindi niya sabihin na, eh, di ba partners kayo? Di ba partners kayo? Oo, partners kami, pero wala kaming ganyang business. So kung sakali nakipag-transact ka sa kanya, whatever damage or prejudice na sinuffer mo, eh, hindi mo pwedeng idama yung partnership doon because the doctrine of apparent authority will not apply. Pero what if wala siyang authority pero ang ginagawa niya ay 
usual business. Hindi naman talaga siya authorized na magbenta o hindi siya talaga authorized bumili. Nandun siya sa ibang aspeto ng business. Nasa HR siya, for example, or nasa ano siya, accounting, for example. Ganun yung business niya. Pero ginawa niya pa rin, nag-secure, nag-procurement siya. Ganun niya, nagbenta siya. Ano, malaki ang bentahan. Mababayin ba yung partnership? Yes, mababayin pa rin yung partnership kasi mag, mag-a-apply yung doctrine of apparent authority. Parang na naman ito, ilagay mo lang yung sarili mo dun sa third person. Kung ikaw yung third person, meron bang, is it reasonable for you to rely on the representation of that person who is uh, representing himself to be a partner in the partnership? Siyempre, meron kang reasonable inquiry. Partner ka ba talaga? Okay lang yun. Magtatanong ka. Pero hanapan mo naman siya ng konting, konting proweba. So, or, or look for the obvious things. Diba kung, kung nag-issue siya ng resibo in the partnership name, indication na partner siya. Kung ginagawa niya yung ano, ang isang bagay which is consistent with the nature of the business of that partnership, maaari kang mag-rely on that representation. Even if later, uh, later on it will turn out na hindi pala talaga siya authorized, you can invoke doctrine of apparent authority. Di ba business na yan? Uh, ano siya, tawag dito, medical supplies, eh bumili ako ng PPE sa kanya. Valid ito, valid. Sabihin ng ibang partner, hindi, hindi siya authorized. Eh, wala na. No? Kasi under the doctrine of apparent authority, if you are acting, no, pursuant to the business of the partnership, then the third person can rely on that representation. Okay. Unless, siguro, unless then, alam mo. So, alam ng third person. Alam naman yan, hindi talaga siya authorized. Di ba talaga accounting ka? Alam ko ang business niyo, ano, ah, tawag dito, um, medical equipment. Pero alam ko hindi ka nagbebenta eh. Alam ko hindi mo linya 'yan. Doon ka dapat sa HR or 'di ba ikaw yung nagha-handle ng ano, ibang bagay. Kung ano man 'yon. Pero alam ko hindi ka nagbebenta. Pero tumuloy pa rin siya. So despite the fact alam niya hindi naman talaga authorized ang pausap niya. Eh hindi siya pwedeng magdelay on doctrine of apparent authority kasi aware naman siya. Eh. Anong apparent authority? Alam niya nga hindi authorized. Info inbox mo lang yung 1818, yung doctrine of apparent authority. If the third person does not know, hindi hmm? niya alam. Although aware siya na partner yun, hindi niya alam na hindi naman pala talaga siya authorized. Pero yung ginagawa niya, consistent with the business. So, okay lang na mag-relay siya dun sa representation ng partner na yun. That's 1818. First paragraph. Second paragraph. Any act of a partner which is not, apparently, for the carrying on of the business in the partnership, In the usual way, does not bind the partnership unless authorized by the other partner. So ito, yan, <clears throat> kitang-kita naman na hindi yun yung business nila. Medical supplies pero nagbebenta ng ano ng uh, construction equipment. Not apparently for the carrying on of the... Hindi, hindi yan mababind yung partnership. Unless daw, in- inauthorized na ng ibang partners. So lahat sila nag agree So if they will all agree, or if they will all consent to the transaction, then so be it. Lahat naman kayo nag-agree. Eh. So it will now bind the partner. Except when authorized by the other partner or unless they have abandoned the business, one or more but less than all of the partners have no authority to. Ibig sabihin, kung natin sa mga sumusunod, dapat unanimous ang decision. Unanimous dapat. Lahat kayo dapat mag-decide in favor, dito or against it kung sakali man na yun. Pero it must be unanimous assign the partnership property in trust for creditors or on the assignment's promise to pay so the assignment of property. Uh, mapapansin ninyo na yung mga naka-enumerate dito sa portion na ito ng Article, 8, Article 1818 ay acts, most of them ay acts of dominion or acts of ownership. It involves the dispos, dispos, disposition disposition or disposal of partnership assets. So dito, assignment of partnership property. We have learned this before, no? a very long time ago, na kapag merong uh, act which will deprive or uh, uh, deprive of, will, will deprive the partnership of a property, partnership property, act of dominion yan, act of ownership, yan. hindi yan pwede, hindi siya considered as act of administration. So lahat sila supposedly dapat mag-decide uh, on the matter. Dispose of goodwill. So, dinidispose niya. 
uh, tinatanggal na tinatapon niya or ini-eliminate niya uh, dinidirecognize niya yung goodwill the act of disposal siya do any other act which should make it impossible to carry in to carry on the ordinary business of the partnership syempre this one is prejudicial to the interest of the partnership hindi mo pwedeng gawin yan yan <clears throat> Confess a judgment. Pag sinabing confess a judgment, you are, ano, you are, tawag dito, doing it against the interest of the partnership. Parang meron kayo, parang kang may inaamin na, not, not necessarily masama, but I would say prejudicial to the interest of the partnership. Pero may, may confession, may pag-amin. May pag-amin. Sa so, pag-ganyan, hindi pa rin, hindi nababahing yung partnership. Enter into a compromise concerning a partnership claim or liability. But compromise, technically, is a donation. No? Compromise, ano yan eh? Give and take siya eh. So parang may, may ano, meron claim, yung, may, may claim yung partnership. Tapos, although hindi makukuha lahat, uh, hindi naman mawawala lahat, pero may portion na mawawala. Yun yung compromise eh. Kunyari, ang claim ng partnership, 1 million. Kapag nagkaroon ng compromise, sige, okay lang. Parang ganun yung compromise, sige, okay na to. Kaya siya compromise. Eh. Hindi na 1 million yung ikiklaim ng partnership, ano na lang, 850,000 na lang. So in effect, nawalan yung partnership. At dahil nawalan yung partnership to the extent of 150,000, to the extent of 150,000, uh, deprivation niya ng property. It's an act of, ano, you can consider it as an act of uh, ownership or act of dominion. Ah, hindi yun pwede na isa lang yung or hindi lahat magde-decide. Submit a partnership claim or liability to arbitration. So pa, parang isasubmit mo yung ano, yung yung claim ng partnership mismo o yung obligation ng partnership to arbitration. Pag arbitration kasi um although it is not it's not always the case, pero ang dulo ng arbitration is for the partners to arrive at a compromise kagaya dito. Again, it's not always the case. Pwede mag-fail yung arbitration na yan. Maaaring mag-fail yung arbitration. Pero ganun uli. Ang purpose kasi ng arbitration is for the parties to meet, someone to mediate, and to reconcile their differences. Ano bang claim mo? Eh, ano bang kaya mong bayaran? Kunyari ang claim ng partnership. Ano bang claim ng partnership? 1 million. O ito, ano kaya mong bayaran? 850. Tapos ipapaliwanag na yun ng arbit arbiter yun. O, oh, 850 lang pala eh. Baka naman pwede mong babaan, tata, ano, imit yung 850. O, oh, ikaw, baka gusto mong babaan pa yung offer mo. Ikaw, taasan mo naman yung offer, et cetera, et cetera. Ganun yung nangyayari sa arbitration. To the point na maaaring magkaroon ng compromise sa dulo ng arbitration. Kapag ganyan, na na-explain ko kanina, for example, sa, sa una pa lang, mag-ano kaya mo 1 million? 850. Okay, meet na kaya sa 850. Sige. So, ganun na naman yung effect parang po imbis na makuha ng partnership yung claim niya na 1 million, parang pumayag na 850 na lang. Which is again, yung 150 na wala. Uh, nawalan siya ng claim or even ownership over that 150. Na forego ni eh. is an act of donation. Na. And then 7, renounce a claim of the partnership. Oh, ganun ulit. Pag renounce, talagang wala na. As opposed to compromise, compromise kahit pa paano may naiwan pa eh. Magkano claim ng partnership? 1 million. Okay, bang 850 na lang? O sige, 850. Na-compromise na walang ka ng 150. But with renunciation, lahat na wala. Magkano yung claim? 1 million. Okay lang ba sa'yo na wala? Parang ganun yung renunciation eh. Of a claim of the partnership. Hindi 850 yung offer eh. Okay lang ba sa'yo na wala akong ibigay? O pag sinabi ng isang partner, o sige, wag na. O renunciation of a claim yan. Bawal yan. Kung siya lang yung magde-decide. It must be a unanimous decision. No act of a partner in contravention of a restriction on authority shall bind the partnership to persons having knowledge of the restriction. So kapag ang isang partner, no, kapag ang isang partner ay may restriction sa authority niya, so parang sinasabi na, oh, sige, ganito ang authority mo. You, ano, you can perform any act of administration, but you cannot. Merong restriction. But you cannot, let's say, list out the property located in Quezon City. Kanyari ganun. Yun yung kanyang authority. You can uh, you can perform any act of administration, but you cannot do this. You cannot list out the property located in Quezon City. Okay. Ano mangyayari? 
hindi siya binding. Oh, Siyempre, ginawa niya yung bagay na pinagbabawal sa kanya. Oh, no act of a partner in contravention of a restriction on the uh, restriction on authority shall bind the partnership to person having knowledge of the restriction. So, alam naman nila eh, na bawal siya tapos gagawin pa rin. So hindi pwede yun. Hindi pwede yun. <clears throat> Kapag may restriction, again, going back to the principle of ano, of uh, fiduciary relationship, dapat tiwala ka na kapag meron kang pinagbawal doon sa isang mong partner, hindi niya gagawin yun. Hindi niya gagawin yun. Kasi delikado na ginaw, ginaw, gagawin pa rin niya yung bagay na pinagbabawal. Why, why, why should Kaya magulo yung ano, kaya magulo ang mga korte. Kasi hindi lang sumunod sa matinong usap. Nag-usap na nga kayo, hindi ka pa sumunod. Anyway. <laughs> 1819, ito mahaba ulito. Pero madali na maintindihin ito. Not really madali, pero pag, naintind, pag nakuha mo yung principle behind the four paragraph, one, two, three, four, five, ang dami. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five pala. When title to real property is in the partnership name, any partner may convey title to such property by a conveyance executed in the partnership name. But the partnership may recover such property unless the Partners Act binds the partnership under the provisions of the first paragraph of 1818, the doctrine of apparent authority, or unless such property has been conveyed by the grantee or a person claiming through such grantee to a holder for value without knowledge that the partner in making the conveyance has exceeded his authority. So una, ganun, babasahin ng buo kasi medyo mahaba talaga to. Sa habang dinadaan natin yung article, habang inuunti yung tenor yung article, unti-unti na rin natin i-discuss. Sabi ng 1819, 1819, pinakaunang situation, yung property ay nakapangalan sa partnership. Yung titulo niya, nakapangalan niya sa partnership. Any partner, ibig sabihin, pwedeng si A, pwedeng si B, pwedeng si C. Again, hindi na nakapangalan kay A yan, kay B or kay C, nakapangalan niya sa partnership. Pero si A, pwede niyang ibenta yan kay X. If A will execute no, will execute the conveyance, the sale, the, 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 the sale, or the disposition in the partnership name. Hindi niya pwedeng sabihin ni A kay X na binibenta ko sa itong property na ito. Tapos yung pangalan ni A ang gagamitin niya. Hindi pwede yan. Dapat partnership name siya. Okay. What if um, A is exceeding his authority? No, A is exceeding his authority. Titignan mo yung doctrine of apparent authority. Titignan mo ngayon si X. May binibentang lupa sa kanya. If ang business ng partnership ni A, B, and C ay real estate, no, real estate, nagbibenta at bumibili at nagbibenta sila ng lupa, tapos si X ay nilapitan ni A, tapos sabi ni A, oh, authorized akong magbenta ng lupa sa iyo. So even if A is not really so authorized, X can rely on the representation. Uh, pwede niyang i-invoke yung doctrine of apparent authority. Hindi ka pala authorized eh. Pero naniwala kasi ako na authorized ka. Total, yung partnership naman ninyo is engaged in real estate business. So yun yung sinabi niya dito. Binding siya sa partnership under the provisions of the first paragraph of 1818 to the doctrine of apparent authority. Tama ba yung sinasabi ko dito? Yan. Tama. Okay. Or, no, unless such property has been has been conveyed by the grantee or a person claiming through such grantee. So dito, ang nangyari dito, si X, for example, alam niya. Alam niya na si A ay nag-exit ng authority. Aware siya. Alam niya si A taga, ano, taga human resources. Eh. Hindi naman talaga siya dapat nagbibenta ng property. Although alam niya, aware siya, na yung partnership ni ABNCI mga ay engaged in 
uh, real estate business. Aware naman siya doon. Pero aware siya na hindi authorized si A. So si X na bilhin niya yung property ng partnership. Ang ginawa ni X, binenta niya kay Y. Nasa ibang tao na ngayon. Hindi na kay X na kay Y na. Si Y ang hindi alam. Ang alam lang ni Y, bumili si X ng lupa kay ABC Partnership. Aware naman si Y niya ABC Partnership ay tawag dito, real estate company. Alam ni Y na si A ay partner sa ABC Partnership. Ang hindi alam ni Y ay si A hindi authorized to sell the property to X. Hindi niya alam yun. Alam niya regular lang. Si X, syempre, sinikret niya yung kay Y. Na kay Y na ngayon. O, ngayon, magkakwestiyon si B tsaka si A. Si A, binenta yung property eh. Hindi naman siya authorized to do it. So, Natry nila nga yung ano yan, bawiin yan. Kung na kay X pa yan, mababawi pa nila. Bakit? Eh, alam ni X na hindi authorized si AJ. Diba? Pero since na kay Y na, conveyed by the grantee to another person for value, si Y, tinanggap niya yung property, wala siyang kaalam-alam dun sa mga kalokohan between A and X. Hindi siya aware. Nagbayad pa siya. Fair market value. So hindi na mababawi yan ng partnership from Y. Okay, that's 1819 first, 1819 second. When title to real property is in the name of the partnership pa rin, i-drawing na natin yan, it is in the name of the partnership. A conveyance executed by a partner in his own name. Ito naman, binenta yung property pero sa pangalan niya. Passes the equitable interest of the partnership. Provided the act is one within the authority of the partner, under the provisions of the first paragraph of Article 1818, the doctrine of apparent authority. Sa Article 1819, itong portion na ito, pina, binenta ni A yung property ng partnership sa pangalan ni A. Dito sa pangalan ng partnership sa unang pagkakataon. Sa pangalawang pagkakataon, sa pangalan ni A, pinalsonal niya. Ano yung effect? For example, si X. Yan, nagbayad naman siya. Pero ano mga pala ni X? Uh, X will become the equit uh, will be the owner of the equitable interest. Anong, <clears throat> anong, anong ibig niyang sabihin dun sa equitable interest? Sa so, ang pala lang niya, similar to that of, let's say, a use of fractionary. No, use of fractionary. The, 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 ano, the sale um uh, will will ano will convey only will pass only the equitable the, the equitable interest so technically no technically technically and legally walang uh, ito, wala naman yang equitable interest sa ano sa philip we don't have that kind of concept no hindi hindi siya interest as contemplated under the law Kaya nga siya equitable. When we say equitable interest, your interest is only based on equity. In effect, nagbayad naman kasi talaga yung, part, yung third person. No? Nagbayad naman yung third person. Kaya lang, no, kaya lang yung kanyang uh, katransak ay si A at binenta yung, partners, ng, yung partnership property ni A papunta kay X, eh, hindi naman kay A yung property. So what will pass on to X will only be the equitable interest. The equitable interest only. Okay. Dalawa na to. Una, if partnership property is transferred in the partnership name, then syempre valid yun. No? Valid yun and it will bind the partnership. If A is not so authorized, um, you apply the doctrine of equi uh, apparent authority. Are they engaged in the real estate business? Alam ba ni X itong lack of authority on the part of A? And meron tayong additional concept kapag nasa third person na, na walang alam sa mga defect na nagnyari dito, hindi na, hindi na mababawi ng partnership yan. Sa pangalawang sitwasyon, yung partnership, nasa pangalan nung partnership ng property, si A binenta yan, Gamit yung pangalan niya, hindi yung pangalan ng partnership. What will be transferred to X will only be the equitable interest. 1819, when title to real property, 
1890 pa rin pala to. No? Third situation, where title to real property is in the name of one or more, but not all the partners, and the record does not disclose the right of the partnership, the partners in whose name the title stands may convey title to such property. But the partnership may recover such property if the Partners Act does not bind the partnership under the provisions of the first paragraph of Article 1818 pertaining to the doctrine of apparent authority, unless the purchaser or his assignee is holder for value and without knowledge. Katulad ni Y kanina, wala siyang alam sa mga uh, defect. O, dito sa 1819, the, part, the property is in the name of A, B. Si hindi kasali. Title to real property is one or some, but not all the partners. Okay. The partners in whose name the title stands may convey the title to such property. So, ibig sabihin si A, pwede niyang i-convey. Tsaka si B, <clears throat> kasi nakapangalan sa kanila eh. But the partnership may recover such property if the Partners Act does not bind the partnership under the provisions of the first paragraph. Ibig sabihin, yung pinagbentahan nila, si X is aware that A and B is not authorized. O kaya, A and B, or the partnership between A, B, and C, is not engaged in the real estate business. So even if X is not aware about the lack of authority, from a uh, by lack of authority of A or B, if X is aware that their business is not real estate but the trading of medical equipment, then the partnership can still recover the property. Again, you always go back to the doctrine of um, apparent authority in the first paragraph of Article 1818. If you want to replay and replay, para lang maintindihan itong mga subsequent ng mga uh, Articles. When title to the to property is in the name of one or more or all the partners or any third person in trust for the partnership, yung pinaka-importante dito, in trust for the partnership, a conveyance executed by a partner in the partnership name or in his own name passes the equitable interest of the partnership, provided that the act is within the authority of the partner. Again, under the provisions of the first paragraph of Article 18, it's napaka-importante nito, no? yung first paragraph of Article 1818, the Doctrine of Apparent Authority. Ito, yung property ay nakapangalan hindi sa partnership. Pwede kay A and or B and or C. Okay. Or a third person. Sabi, or a third person. But it is clear that it is in trust for the partnership. Ano siya? Merong trust agreement. Uh, although you are the, ano, you are the registered owner, A, B, and C, it is in your name, or the third person, they are aware that they are not, uh, their uh, ownership thereof is not full. They are, are, they are mere trust for trustees. No? They are mere trustees of the partnership. So yung, ano, yung technically the real owner, no? the beneficial owner, kung baga, the beneficial owner of that property is the partnership. So, for it to be validly conveyed, it, it must be conveyed in the partnership name. Okay. Kapag ganyan, that the property is in the name of, not, not in the name of the partnership, but it is in trust for the partnership, what will pass on will only be the equitable interest. Just like yung uh, dito, situation number two, kung saan, nasa partnership name siya, pero transfer siya not under the partnership name. Ito, it is in trust for the partnership. It is not in the partnership name, but it is in trust for the partnership. Kinonvey siya. What will pass on is only the equitable interest. Consider, uh, taking into consideration the provisions of the first paragraph of Article 1818 pertaining to the doctrine of uh, apparent authority. Medyo naguguluhan na siguro kayo by this time. Kaya kasi ako na... na na hihiwagaan na rin ako dito sa mga nangyayari. Pero tuloy lang natin. And finally, 1819, when title to real property is in the name of all the partners, a convenience executed by all the partners, passes all the rights in, their, in such property. Siyempre, yung property is in the name of A, B, at saka C. If A, 
B and C, we uh, transfer the property uh, at tatlo sila, executed by all of the partners. This is easy to understand. Since tatlo silang co-owners ng property na yan, and all of them agreed to the sale or disposition of the property, then obviously it will bind them and the transfer of the property will be considered as valid. That is Article 1819 last time. Siguro ito yung pinakamadaling intindihin sa buong Article 1819. Anyway, an admission 1820, let's leave that. If you want to take a break, you can just pause the video. So medyo nahilo ka doon. Pause mo lang. Balikan mo na lang sa later on. Sabi ng Article 1820, an admission or representation made by any partner concerning partnership affairs within the scope of his authority and the authority in accordance with this title is evidence against the partnership. Itong Article 1820, pag sinabing admission, most probably this is adverse to the partnership. Meron na siyang sinabi. For example, sinabi niya, may utang kami. That's an admission. No? May utang yung partnership. That's an admission. Or a representation. Nagbibenta kami ng ganyan. Nagkatanong ko niya, may police Nagbibenta ba kayo ng face mask dito? Nagbibenta kami dyan. That's a representation. May natanong, may utang ba yan? Meron utang. That's an admission. Usually, mga neg adverse to, mga negative to the interest or prejudicial to the interest of the partnership. It, it is considered evidence against the partnership. Pwede mo siyang gamitin laban doon sa partnership. So, for example, nagkaroon ng kasuhan, nagkaroon ng kasuhan, nagkaroon ng kaso, tapos merong nagtestigo sa niya. Eh, sinabi nga ni X, o oh, sinabi nga ni A ganito eh, may utang nga daw eh. Kukontra si B, tsaka si C, eh, siya lang nagsabi nun. Hindi kami. Ay, hindi, hindi pa din sabihin ni B and C yun. Kasi any admission, sabi ng 1820, any admission, ang mga pag-amin, yung admission, di ba? Ang mga pag-amin at anong pag-representa, pagpapakita, representation, made by any partner concerning the partnership affairs. Siyempre yung partnership affairs lang. Kung ibang bagay naman yung inadmission niya, it will not bind the other partners. Pero pagpatungkol dun sa partnership, it will be binding. So for example, yun nga, may utang ba yung partnership? Umangan siya, oo. Oh, oh. Nagbibenta ba kayo ng ganito? Wala naman kayong permit? Oo, oh, oh, nagbibenta kami niya. <laughs> mga ganyan, no? mga ganyan, ay binding and not really binding, but maaaring gamitin as evidence against the partnership. As long as, again, applying the doctrine of apparent authority, alam nung nakikinig ng pag-amin or ng representation, or hindi siya aware pala. No? Hindi siya aware about that. Pero naniniwala siya no? about the authority being represented by the partner. Yan. <clears throat> 1821. Ito madali lang to. Notice to any partner or any matter relating to the partnership affairs and the knowledge of the partner acting in particular matter acquired while a partner or then partner present to his mind and the knowledge of any other partner who reasonably could and should have communicated it to the active partner operate as notice or to or knowledge of the partnership except in case of fraud of the partnership committed by or with the consent of a partner. Parang dito ang point dito. The knowledge of the partner is knowledge of the partnership. Parang ganyan. So pag, for example, the, may, may utang, for example, yung partnership, so X, Y, and Z. Partnership. Ang may utang yung X, Y, Z partnership. Okay. Si A yung pinagkakautangan nila. Bago makapag-file ng kaso si A sa X, Y, Z partnership, kailangan niya mag-file. Mag serve ng demand letter. Diba? Kasi alam natin sa obliko na no demand, no delay. So kailangan niyang magpadala ng demand letter. Padala siya ng demand letter ang nakatanggap si X. May hamon si Aiden. O magbayad na kayo ng utang niyong limang milyon dahil kung hindi, wala na akong magagawa kung di kasuhan kayo sa korte. Talaga yun doon. Ang nakabasa lang si X. Hindi aware si Y, hindi aware si Z. Ngayon, si X, despite nalaman niya na nagde-demand na si A for the payment at, at alam din ni X na kapag hindi pa sila nagbayad, 
makakasuhan na sila. Eventually, nag-got si A kasi hindi sila nagbayad. Hindi pa din sabihin, hindi pa din sabihin later on why na, ay, ba't mo kami kinasuhan, hindi ka pa naman nagde-demand letter or si C, sabihin niya si. Ba't dumiretso ka ng kaso, wala naman demand letter na pinala sa amin. Pwede din sabihin ni A, eh, nagpadala ko ng demand letter kay X. At hindi pa din tumanggi si Y and C. Hindi namin alam yun. Wala kami alam dyan. Does not matter. Na sabi ng 1821, not is to any partner, is not is to the partnership, including the other partners. Yan. Except, ang, kung ang pinag-uusapan ay fraud, no? committed by or with the consent of the other partner. Kung merong, for example, merong connivance between X and A, sabi niya, sabi ni X kay A, sige, bigay mo sa akin yung letter. Magkano ba yung utang? O oh, sige, hindi ko sasabihin sa kanila para may interest ka. Tapos share pa yun. <laughs> Gusto pa pagkakitaan ni X yung partnership nila. Oh, hindi yan pwede. If there is fraud involved, it will not bind the partnership. It will not operate as notice to the partnership. Tandaan ninyo, notice to the partner is notice to the partnership. Pero hindi baliktad. A notice to the partnership is notice to the partner. Walang ganun. Uh, hindi siya pabaliktad. Yung partner ang inonotify mo with respect to the partnership affairs dapat, ha? hindi kung ano-ano. Personal affairs. Ha? It will operate as notice to or knowledge of the partnership. And then we have 18, Article 1822. So sa Article 1822, sabi niya, where by any wrongful act or omission of any partner acting in the ordinary course of the business of the partnership or with the authority of his co-partners, loss or injury is caused to any person not being a partner in the partnership or any penalty is incurred, the partnership is liable therefore to the same extent as the partner so acting or omitting the act. Ito naman, madali lang intindihin tong 1820. Ang pinapatungkulan dito ay wrongful act. Ay, nawala yung ball pen ko. Wrongful act or omission of any partner. Sa 1822, meron siyang wrongful act or meron siyang hindi ginawa. At itong wrongful act at omission na yan ay ginagawa niya in the ordinary or nangyari in the ordinary course of the business partnership or with the consent or authority of his co-partners. Because of that wrongful act or omission, merong, merong nag-suffer ng loss or injury. Sino daw ang magiging liable for that loss or injury? Ang sabi niya, 1822, the partnership will be liable. Why? Why is it the partnership will become liable? But hindi lang yung partner. Kasi siya yung may gumawa ng wrongful act, di ba? Or omission. Bakit pati yung partnership na dadamay doon sa loss or injury na yan or doon sa penalty na kailang na na-incur because of that wrongful act or omission. Tandaan, 1822 speaks of a wrongful act or omission which was made in the ordinary course of the business. Hindi naman to outside the business. Eh. Kung meron siyang wrongful act or omission which, was in, uh, which happened outside the business, then hindi, yan, hindi maladama yung partnership dyan. Isa pang dahilan kung bakit uh, ataw dito, uh, liable yung partnership dito is because uh, the partner na nagkaroon ng wrongful act or omission is acting with the authority of his co-partners. Aware sila and authorized yung action na yun o uh, yung transaction kung saan nangyari yung wrongful act or omission. So justified lang naman to, di ba? If the wrongful act or omission happened while uh, the partner is performing an act in the ordinary course of the business or that act is with authority from his co-partners, then it is only reasonable that the partnership will be held liable for any loss or injury suffered by that third person or the penalty to be incurred. Okay? <clears throat> the partnership is bound, uh, bound to make good the loss. Uh, kailan daw pa uh, tawag dito, liable ang partnership. Una, where one partner acting within the scope of his apparent authority receives money or property of a third person and misapplies it. So dito sa number one, applying the doctrine of apparent authority, yung third person ay protektado. Diba? 
protektado siya na nag-relay siya dun sa doctrine of apparent authority. Tapos, itong itong partner na ito, minis upgrade niya, minis appropriate niya. Sa ano mangyayari? The partnership is bound. Ito na yung medyo mahirap na yung mga gantong bagay uh, in so far as the partners are concerned, diba? Hindi mo na alam kung ano ginagawa na iba mong partners na no? okay pa ba sila? Baka naman na ibang iba na silang iniisip. Inuuna na nila yung interest ng sarili nila, yung sarili lang interest. Yan yung mahirap sa partnership. So dapat talaga kilala mo yung mga uh, pinapartner mo uh, yung, or the persons you will enter into with a contract of partnership or tiwalang-tiwala ka sa kanila. Pangalawa, where uh, the partnership is bound pa rin, uh, where the partnership, again, in the ordinary course of his business, receives money or property from a third person, and the money or property so received is misapplied by any partner while it is in the custody of the partnership. So ito, hindi nag-misrepresent yung yung ano yung tawag dito yung partner he is acting in the name of the partnership and in the ordinary course of its business so again ang point mo dito ang ating aim palagi ay protektahan yung third person so looking at the point of view of the third person meron bang meron ba siyang dahilan meron ba siyang reason para hindi magtiwala hindi wala kasi nga it was uh, the ano the transaction is made in the course of the business and it is in the name of the partnership. So, tiwalang-tiwala siya doon. Again, you can just apply the doctrine of apparent authority here. So, itong si third person, binigay niya yung money niya or property niya. And, wala, na misapply then eventually by any partner. But the misapplication or the misappropriation happened while it is in the custody of the partnership. So in that case, the partnership is obligated to make good for to make good the loss suffered by that third person. Again, ano to, for the protection of the third person. All partners are liable solidarity with the partnership for everything chargeable to the partnership under Articles 1822 and 1822. So mga pinag-usapan natin dito, yung wrongful act or omission, itong ano yung pagtanggap ng pera na namis apply yan solidarity liable daw ano ibig sabihin ng solidarity liable any of the partners may be held uh, liable for the amount or for the claim even if they are not the guilty party partner so for example si A nasan tayo article 1822 si A yung may wrongful act or omission But A is doing it in the ordinary course of uh, the business of the partnership. Yan. Nagkaroon ng, na, may nasuffer na damage si X. Now, si X has the right to uh, claim against all of them. All of them. Not just A. All of them. So, yun yung nature ng solidary liability. At yun yung danger ng solidary liability. Di ba? Um, solidarity, actually, solidary liability is frowned upon. That is not the general rule, di ba? The general rule is joint obligation. There is only solidarity when stipulated or when the law, the nature of the obligation requires solidarity. So one of the situations where solidarity is declared by the law is Article 1824. So dito yung damage suffered by X, even if A is the guilty person or the guilty partner, can be collected from C, can be collected from B. Pwede niyang singiling niyan. Pero si B and C, being the innocent parties or the innocent partners, can always ask for reimbursement from A. Kasi sa dulo ng kwentuhan na to, si A naman talaga yung naging pabaya. If B and C ay hindi naman pabaya, they are careful, they are diligent in the performance of their obligations or duties as partners in ABC partnership, then there is no reason for them actually to pay X. Pero yun nga, just to protect the interest of third persons, the liability is now declared solidarity. But in a solidarity liability, if only one of the partners is guilty or the solidarity debtor is guilty, debtors is guilty, then the innocent debtors can always ask from, for reimbursement from the guilty debtor or in this case, the guilty solidarity partner. Okay? 
1825. <clears throat> when a person, ito na, ano to, I think estopel to, by words spoken or written or by conduct, represents himself or consents to another representing him to anyone as a partner in an existing partnership or with one or more persons not actual partners, he is liable to any such persons to whom such representation has been made, who has, on the faith of such representation, given credit to the actual or apparent partnership. And if he has made such representation or consented to its business being made in a public manner, he is liable to such person, whether the representation has or has not been able to make, has or has not been made or communicated to such person, so giving credit by or with the knowledge of the apparent partner making the representation or consent that is being made. When a partnership liability results, he is liable as though he were an actual member of the partnership. When no partnership liability results, he is liable pro rata with the other persons, if any, so consenting to the contract or representation as to incur liability otherwise separately. Alam haba ng article. When a person has been thus represented to be a partner in an existing partnership, or with one or more persons not actually partners, he is an agent of the persons consent, consenting to such representation to bind them to the extent and in the same manner as though he were a partner in fact with respect to the persons who rely on such representation. When all the members of the existing partnership consent to the representation, a partnership act or obligation results but in all other cases, it is the joint act or obligation of the person acting on the persons consenting to the representation. <clears throat> Partnership by Estopel. Sa sobrang haba ng sinabi niya, ganito lang yun. Okay. Laging, pag partnership by Estopel, laging may third person involved. Si X. Para magkaroon ng partnership by Estopel, dapat merong dalawang bagay. Misrepresentation at reliance in good faith. Ang haba ng sinal, ganito lang yun. Sisimplihan na lang natin. Reliance in good faith. May pandalo kong nagaganap, may salita, sulat, basta may act kung saan si X ay na gojo, na darang siya, na darang, na loko siya. At dahil doon sa mga misrepresentation na yan, nag si X, sabi niya, hmm, parang totoo yun. Eh. Yan. Nagpautang siya, oh, nag-deliver siya ng good, nag siya doon sa misrepresentation. Yan ay uh, minimum elements ng estopel. Estopel. <clears throat> Para magkaroon ng partnership by estopel. Yung estopel, nag, hindi lang siya sa partnership nagagana pa. Sa ibang bagay pa. May estopel. For example, sabi ni YKX, alam mo meron akong ano, business. Uh, expected ko kikita yun ng ano, 10 billion this year. Kaya lang meron akong ano, kailangang bayaran na gantong amount. Sa may misrepresentation, tapos kung si X ay maniniwala, may reliance. For example, ganun. So in effect, hindi pwedeng si X, si Y later on ay tumanggi. Hindi ko sinabi yan. Hindi sinabi may estopel, ganun. Parang ganun yung point ng partnership by estopel. May mga tao dito Si A, si B, si C, si B, si E. May mga tao dyan na nag-misrepresent na sila ay partner in a partnership. In fact, hindi. Kunyari si E yun. Sabi ni EKX, partner kami, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. Ito yung business namin. Kailangan namin ng pera pa utang. O si X naniniwala siya ngayon. Ay partner pala sila. Walang alam kung 
kung walang alam si A, B, C, and sa ginagawa ni E, si E lang yung partner by Estefan. Walang nakikreate na partnership by Estefan. Si E lang. Okay. Doon sa dati kong example, si X, medyo nagtanong-tanong siya. Sabi ni X kay D, B, uh, lumapit sa akin si E. Sabi niya, may partnership daw kayo ni A, B, C, and D. O sabi ni oo, totoo yun may partnership na. Pero totoo, wala naman. So, meron na kayo partnership by Estefan between D and E. So, yun nga, yun yung mananagot no? sa mga obligations na kung ano man na may incur ng estopel na yan in favor of X. Or kahit na si A and B ay totoong may partnership. Totoong may partnership si A and B. Sabi ni E kay X, alam mo ba sali ako lang sa AB partnership na yan? O, si X nagtanong. Ang alam ko si A tsaka si B lang ito, ba't may E na? Nagtanong ngayon si X. A, B, kukonfirm ko lang. Sabi ni E, partner na daw niya kayo. Totoo ba yun? O si ANB, meron na namang sa presentation. Imbis na tumanggi sila, sabi kasi ni XK ANB, kasi mangungutang daw siya eh. Isang bilyon? Totoo ba yun? Tapautangin ko na siya eh. Kung oo, oo lang kayo na totoo, partner kayo. Sabi ni H, oo, partner kami. Ayan. Create sila ngayon ng partnership by STOP. Actually, hindi na importante yung nature of relationship among the people here. Kung may partnership ba talaga dyan or wala. As long as kung sino man yung mga sasakay doon sa misrepresentation, kung sino man yung makikijive, makikioo doon sa misrepresentation, sila-sila ngayon yung mga partners by Estopel and sila-sila ngayon yung members ng partnership by Estopel. Ang importante lang again, sa lahat ng mga nabasa natin, merong misrepresentation and a third person or third person relied in good faith on that misrepresentation. And with that reliance, they extended credit na hindi na nakolect na later on and they suffer damage. Siyempre, we can all agree na hindi naman magsasuffer ng damage si X kung hindi nanloko, kung walang misrepresentation na ginawa yung ibang tao dito. And we can only point to the persons na nag-misrepresent or pumayag, nag-consent or nag-agree dun sa misrepresentation. Okay? Ganun lang naman kasi ito yung partnership by Estopel. Wag mo, syempre, wag mo idadamay. Obvious naman to. Wag mo idamay yung mga hindi nakisali. So, for example, si si tahi-tahimik lang siya. Never naman siya tinanong ni X. Never naman siya nag-misrepresent. Wag mo siyang idamay. Hindi siya kasali dun sa obligation. <clears throat> And 28 and 29, a person admitted as a partner into an existing partnership is liable for all obligations Ayun. all the obligations of the partnership arising before his admission as though he had been a partner when such obligations were incurred, except that his liability shall be satisfied only out of the partnership property unless there is stipulation to the contrary. So, tignan mo yung timing. For example, at this, as, at this time, ang obligation ng partnership ay 80,000. Si X ay hindi pa part. Uh, ang partners pa lang dito, X tsaka si Y. Si Z, naging partner lang siya at the time na ang utang ay 80,000. Also, at that time, yung assets na lang ng partnership ay, let's say, 40,000. Si Z nag-contribute ng, let's say, 20. Ganyan yung nangyari. At that time, ang utang na ng partnership ay 80,000. So, ang total na, na partnership assets ngayon, 40 at saka 20. Ngayon, itong pinagkakautangan nila ng ETK, pangalan natin siya, si A, naghabol na ngayon. Nahingi na siya ngayon ng bayad. So, si A, si A kinuha niya na itong 40 to settle the obligation as well as the 20 additional capital contributed by C upon his admission. Kulang pa na 40, 50, 60, 20. Sino ngayon ang maghahabol? Kanina niya ngayon nahabol niya 20,000 na yan. yan. Yan ay hahabolin niya kay X and Y lamang. Hindi kasama si C. Yan, nakalagay dito. 
except that his liability shall be satisfied only out of the partnership property. Hanggang dun lang yung kanyang ibabangon. If naabutan niya na yung mga partnership, yung partnership obligation na yun. Yung mga naabutan lang niya at the time of the admission. Kasi kung may mga bago dito, kunyari, dito lang na-incur kay B naman, for example, meron pang 40K na liability, pero this was incurred after the admission of Z into the partnership, then B, kung hindi mababayaran yung 40K na yan, can run after the personal property of X, Y, and Z. Damay na siya ngayon. Pero yung mga naabutan lang niya na obligation upon his admission as a partner to the partnership up to the extent of his contribution lang ang kanyang obligation. Except, of course, nasa dulo ng provision na ito, there is a stipulation to the contrary. Upon the admission ng Z, nag-usap-usap na sila, o tanggap ka dito, o may utang ka ng 80,000, ha? at kapag hindi tayo nakapag uh, come up ng, prop, ng sufficient na pera para bayaran yan, mal, mal, magiging liable, personally liable ka to the extent of your personal property. O, pag pumayag siya doon, then so be it. Pero kung walang ganong klaseng agreement, the, the liability of Z will extend only to his capital contribution for those obligations na naabutan lang niya upon his admission as a new partner to the partnership. Then, the creditors of the partnership shall be preferred to those of each partner as regards the partnership property. Without prejudice to this right, the private creditors of each partner may ask the attachment and public sale of the share of the latter in the partnership asset. So, Article 1827, uh, repetition na lang to ng ibang principles that we already discussed before. Kapag may par partnership property, sino ang mauuna dyan? Siyempre, creditors of the partnership. Kapag kung sakaling nagkakaroon na ng, ano, ng problema, yung partnership, at sa tingin ng mga creditors ay nalulustay na o nauubos na yung, par yung partnership property mag-uunahan na yung mga creditors. So, with respect to partnership property, yung creditors ng partnership ang uunahin. Sila yung preferred pagdating dyan. So, yung mga personal creditors ng mga partners, hindi sila, kunyaring, il, 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 kunyaring pipila sila, kunyari ipamimigay na yung partnership property. The settle na, i-ano na, kumbaga, i-liquidate na. Sinong uunahin babayaran? Is may mga nakapilang creditor ng partnership at nakapilang personal creditors ng mga partners. Una yung mga creditors ng partnership. Kung ang gagamitin yung kabayaran ay partnership property. Kung kabalik tara naman yan, kung personal property yung gagamitin. Siyempre, yung personal creditors ng partner, concerned partner ang uunahin. Hindi yung creditor ng partnership. Ano lang siya? Match-match lang siya. So ito yung attachment na yan, no? public sale, <clears throat> napag-usapan na natin yan before. So if you want to recall yung rule natin about attachment, yan. <clears throat> you, can, ano, you can lay yung ating, I think nasa property rights yung property rights ang dapat. So that's it. So... Uh, last, ano na yan, article na yan, nag-block na. So we're done with obligations of the partners to third persons. <laughs> Ang haba ng discussion na to. So, for the next video, thank you for staying kung sa kahalingan na naupuan nyo to ng isang, o, ng isang diretso. But if not, okay lang din. But panoorin ninyo on your own facing. For the next video, we will now discuss the solution the solution and winding up of the affairs. If you have questions, now you can post them in our MS teams or you can course it to your president. No? Para ma-address naman natin yung mga pag -ingan. Okay? Thank you and stay safe. Bye-bye.